What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, we are going to go over the top 10 surprising sales I saw last week. Stay tuned. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. If you haven't watched my prior video, I just crossed 4,500 subscribers recently, so I announced what I'm gonna give away when I hit 5,000 subscribers. And it's gonna be this here, Fantastic Four, number 67, and a 5.0, a book that I picked up in the collection I bought earlier this year, so I thought that that would be a cool book to give away for this. So, if you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel so I can give this book away. All right, now, let's get into these top 10 sales. If you haven't watched one of these videos before, what I do is I watch the weekly Heritage Comic Auction. I price out anywhere from about 150 to 200 books. This week, there were actually a ton of big keys in this auction. I think I priced over 200, like around 220 or 230. And if you watch my market video, this was also a very strong week. So I decided to do this week a little different. Usually I do five on the high side, five on the low side, but because there were so many strong sales, I decided I would do a video dedicated to the high sales. So I'm gonna do 10 surprising high sales from this Heritage Auction. So with that, let's get into these sales. Let's start with number 10. If you follow me on Instagram, and if you don't, go check me out on Instagram, give me a follow there. But if you follow me on Instagram, I posted about this sale when it happened. This was Incredible Hulk. Number two with a CGC 6.5 that sold for a record $7,200. Now I've been talking about these early Hulk issues. So that's issues one through six before the run basically got canceled. Then he went over to Tales to Astonish. Then he eventually came back to Hulk in issue 102. But I've seen these books spiking a lot. Basically, I've talked about this with a lot of other books throughout the last year where you would have these keys just go straight up. And uh, then they eventually hit a peak and they start, they kind of start tanking a bit. And I'm just a little worried that's kind of what's happening with these early Hulk issues right now. Now, issue number two, the thing with this one is it hasn't moved quite as much as the others. So I think issue two is relatively safe. The other issues though, which one of them I'm gonna talk about later in this video, uh, I would definitely be a little more cautious around. Now, if you're not familiar with this book, Hulk started off in issue one as gray, and then they ended up changing him to green because of some challenges with the printing. And so he became green in this. So this is the first time you have the green Hulk, which to me is a pretty major key event for this character. Now I had estimated the price of this book at $6,500. This sale of 7,200 was 11% above my estimate. And with a book this big, that is a, a big number for this one. The prior record was actually from 2020. It was $3,400. So that's a jump of 112% in two years. Now, if you've been watching the comic market, even with the increases in prices and the corrections, being up around 100 to, uh, let's say like 125, 130% is pretty normal right now for a lot of books, even after they've corrected. So that's why I'm not overly concerned with Hulk number two, with issue number two. I don't think it's gotten really out of hand yet for the prices that it's seeing, but when you compare it to the other issues in this these first six from the run, some of those have gone up a lot more than that. So that's where you might wanna have a little more caution. Now I also like to often recommend alternatives for these books because sometimes these are really expensive and so you can have alternatives for the Hulk. And one that I often like to talk about is one that I just mentioned recently, which is issue 102. That's when the Hulk comes back uh, and gets his own title again. And I just feel like this book is always really underrated for what it is because it's very similar to Captain America number 100, Iron Man number one, Submariner number one. And those books have gone up considerably. They are much stronger than Hulk 102. And so a mid-grade in this book you can get for around 200 to $300, whereas those other issues, they're often in the mid-grades around four to 600. And so I think it's a pretty affordable book, especially considering what's been happening with those first six issues. So definitely one to keep on your watch list and check out if you're interested in picking up a Hulk key. All right, now number nine, this is Walt Disney's Comics and Stories number 31 with a CGC 80 
white pages copy that sold for a record $3,360. Now I actually talked about this book, not this 8.0, but this book issue 31 in my recent golden age video that I put out. And so this is a key for Disney because this is the first time that you had Carl Barks drawing Donald Duck in the Walt Disney's and Comics Stories title. So he's really the artist that's responsible for us seeing Donald Duck as he's drawn today. He, that he really is the one that transformed Donald Duck into the character that we know today. And so this is a key issue for Donald Duck. The first time he actually drew him was in four color number nine. And so that's a completely different book. That's the first time he drew him overall, but this is the first time in this title. Now, I had estimated the price of this book at $2,640, and the reason I was so specific about that is that this exact same copy sold in January of this year for $2,640, and that was so recent that I just said that's the, the current fair market value for this book, because Golden Age books, they don't sell all that often, so that was a very recent sale for that book. This beat that sale by 27%, and it even beat the prior record of 2,880 by 17%. So this is a strong sale for this book. Now I mentioned this in my Golden Age video, but Disney books can be a little bit tricky. They've been around a long time, so there are a lot of issues. And so you often really need to have a book that's either in really high grade, or you have to be able to identify what those key issues or desired issues are. And so at least within this run, some of the things that are very desirable are World War II Bonds covers, which this is one of those World War II covers as well. Then you've also got things like the first 12 issues. The first 12 issues are especially tough to get, and so those ones tend to be pretty in demand and, and basically in any grade because they can be really hard to come across. But once you start getting to the later issues, kind of the more filler issues, there really isn't as much demand for those. You really need to look for higher grade copies if, if that's what you're, you're interested in going after. Now, for alternatives for this book, what I would really recommend is looking at some of those War Bonds covers. There are a few of them in this run. Now, issue 20 is one of my favorites. I have a copy of that that I'm going to get graded, and it's got Donald Duck on the cover. It's got the solid red background. I think it looks really great. Another one that's a, a good one to be looking for is issue number 46. It's a yellow cover. Again, it's got Donald Duck on the cover, and he's dressed up as Uncle Sam. So those ones are these World War II era covers with those War Bonds type covers. Now, Issue 31 is definitely the most in demand of those types because it's also got that first Carl Barks art in the title. So if you can come across that book, definitely a great one to try to pick up. It is a solid Disney key if you're a Disney collector. All right, now number eight. This is Fantastic Four, number 18, with a very high grade CGC 9.4 white pages copy that sold for a record $15,600. This was a monster book, just a monster book. And this is the first appearance of the Super Scroll. If you're not familiar with that, I think it is a character that we have a decent shot of seeing show up in the MCU at some point. This is also not an easy book to price. You're not gonna get nine, four copies of this book showing up very often. I had estimated the value at $12,000. This beat that estimate by 30%. The record was actually set all the way back in 2010 for $12,600, so it beat that record by 24%. So if this book sold for $12,600 back in 2010, why did I just estimate the value at $12,000? The reason is this book had come down quite a bit since that 2010 sale. In 2019, a copy sold for $6,000. In 2020, a copy sold for $5,760. And a 9.0 sold for $6,600 in June of this year. And historically, the 9.4s were selling for around double of what the 9.0s were selling for. And this book had been trending down this summer. And so that's why I came up with 12,000. So this was a strong sale. And if you're wondering about the census for this book, there is 198, there is 196, and there are eight nine fours. So there are a couple books that are higher and seven other copies other than this one that have that nine four grade. I don't know how many are white pages because the census doesn't break that out, but the white pages probably help this book a little as well. Now for an alternative, personally, I would just stick with this book if this is what you want. If you're, you're thinking that Super Scroll is gonna be coming or if it's just a book that you like, a character that you like, I would just aim for a lower grade. In the 2.0 to 3.0 range, you can get it for around 200 to $350. You definitely don't need to spend $15,000 on this book. All right, now number seven. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 11 with a CGC 8.5. 
very high grade for this book. Sold for a record $5,880. This is the second appearance of Doc Ock, and this is a notoriously difficult book to get in high grade. I think it's just the darker background makes it a little harder, shows a lot more flaws. At an 8.5 on the census, there are only 45 copies graded higher. So this is a very high grade copy of this book. Now, this book had been retreating in price some, but this was a really, really strong sale. I had estimated the price at $4,000. It beat my estimate by 47%. The prior record was 4,600, so it beat that record by 28%. But the last sale was from April of this year for just $3,600. So this is a big jump from that $3,600 sale by 80%. So this was a very strong sale for this book. Now, Doc Ock is easily a top three character for Spider-Man villains out there, very popular. So I don't think that the Doc Ock keys are ever really bad to go for. And with a lot of the Amazing Spider-Man keys kind of correcting a little bit, not a bad time to go after Silver Age Amazing Spider-Man if you get them for a deal. But this was, like I said, big sale for this book. Now, if you want something that's a little more affordable, you can just go one issue later to Amazing Spider-Man number 12, where you've got his third appearance. It's a lighter colored cover. It's a yellow cover, so you tend to have higher grade copies available. So for comparison, like I said, there were only 45 copies graded higher of issue 11. There are 123 copies graded higher of issue 12. And so a lot more that are available, and so that 8.5, has recently sold for around $2,640, about half the price of issue 11. But you can go for lower grades in the two to four range, you can get this book for around $400. All right, now for number six, we're gonna stick with Amazing Spider-Man. We're gonna go five issues later to Amazing Spider-Man number 16 with another high grade copy of CGC 7.5 that sold for a record $2,880. This is another early ASM key. This is the that crossover of Daredevil into the Spider-Man title, and he is still wearing his yellow suit. So it's, this is early Daredevil. It's within the time frame of the first six issues. Now, Daredevil is another book that it had been retreating some, then it got a boost from the MCU announcement that they're going to be doing a show or something like that, and then you had another boost for the character when he showed up in his yellow costume in the trailer for She-Hulk. And so I would not be surprised if that is one of the things that really drove the record price in this book. It's that yellow costume and appearing in the She-Hulk trailer. Now, I had estimated a price of $1,900, sold for 52% above my estimate. The prior record for a 7.5 was 2,550 from January of this year, but like I said, it had been trending down with a $2,100 sale in April and other grades selling lower as well. So this also set the record by 13%, so a very strong sale for this Amazing Spider-Man key. Now, like I said, when I was talking about issue number 11, Silver Age Amazing Spider-Man are never bad books to go after. And I just wanna reiterate, it does seem like there are some opportunities with Silver Age ASM right now. Now, within the Amazing Spider-Man title, I don't think there's a great alternative for this book, but if you want to go to Daredevil issue number 16, that is the crossover of Spider-Man into the Daredevil title. It's also the first time that you have John Romita drawing Spider-Man, so it's got a artist key fact with that one too. And that one's been coming down a little bit, so maybe one to watch if you're looking to pick up that book. All right, now number five, we're going back to Incredible Hulk again. This was Incredible Hulk number three with a CGC 6.5 that sold for a record $5,280. Now, unlike issue two, where I was saying that one was only up 112% in the last two years, this is one of the issues that I think you wanna be a little more cautious about, which I'll talk about in a moment. Now, I had estimated the price of this book at $3,000. This was 76% above my estimate, a very strong sale. Prior record was 2,500 from June of 2021, so it beat that record by 111%. Now, when I'm talking about the comparisons with Hulk number two, in 2020, this book was selling from between $925 to $1,650. So even at that peak price from that year, it is up 220% since then. And at the lower end of that range, it is up 400% since then. Those are the types of prices that I saw with other key issues over the last year to a year and a half where you really need to be cautious with that book. If you're up 200 to 400%, 
the likelihood of it not being able to maintain those types of numbers becomes relatively high. And I know I'll probably have people tell me it's like, oh, well, there's lower numbers of the Hulk books and everything like that. It's like we have seen this play out over and over and over again with every key out there. So I just want to say be cautious with these early Hulk books because with those types of jumps, it is tough to sustain that type of value. Now, I already talked about the alternative for Incredible Hulk, so I'm not gonna go into another one here, so we'll just move on to number four. All right, so for number four, we are jumping back into the Golden Age with Suspense Comics number 11 with a CGC 1.5 that sold for a massive $3,120. This is one of the top L.B. Cole covers that's out there from the Golden Age. In my personal opinion, this is a classic L.B. Cole Devil cover as a character that he also used in Mass Comics number two. And I always like to pay close attention to books like this because I have a copy of this book. It is one of the books on my keeper list. And so mine is a, a 1.8, so this is mine. And yeah, it looks really nice for a 1.8, but it's missing uh, a couple pieces on the back there and we've got this guy smoking this <laughs> all on the back. Uh, but, but yeah, that's what I like with these low grade books is copies that, that present really well, which this one does. So that's why I like to watch that one. Now I had estimated this book at $1,700. This beat my estimate by 84%. There was no prior sale in this grade, so it was a record by default. But for me, the way that I measure records for, for my record keeping, for when I'm doing those charts and all of that, is that if it doesn't meet my estimate, and there's no prior sale, it doesn't count as a record for my tracking purposes. So this one met my estimate and it crushed that estimate. This was a big sale. A 2.5 sold earlier this year in February for the exact same price. So that tells you how strong the sale was with a 1.5 hitting that price. Now this run in general is very pricey. It's all LB Cole covers from issue four on and issue three is one of the most in demand pre-code horror type covers from the golden age of all time. It is an Alex Schomburg cover and just one of the top covers of the entire era. So you really do have to be ready to uh, put some money down if you're looking to, to get into the suspense comics run. And you also have to be very patient because they don't come up all that often and they are pretty rare books because, you know, these ones, like this was 1946. These are these are mid 40s books and there just aren't a lot of them out there. Now this isn't something where there's really an alternative for this book. I mentioned Mass Comics number two, but that book costs even more than this one by quite a bit. So it kind of is what it is. Like I said, it's expensive to get into this run in these types of books. That 1.5 is actually the second lowest graded copy on the census with a, a single 0 0.5 being the lowest. My 1.8 is the third lowest graded copy. There are a total of 66 out there and there is 198 that came from the Promise Collection. Now, I know that book caused a little bit of controversy because there are some people that don't think it was a 9.8 because it had dust shadows on it. But I just say, go check out the Mile Highs. Go check out the Mile High 9.8s. There are plenty of them that have dust shadows on them. You can get 9.8s in the Golden Age with dust shadows and it's just, that's one of the things I've talked about where you have slightly different grading in the golden age versus other ages. And that's one of the areas that you do. You can get 9.8s with dust shadows in the golden age, but that's one of the things that the promise collection I think has really done is it's brought attention to a lot of these runs that were either just known by a few collectors or just not as widely collected at the time. But now when you have these massive sales for those books, it really brings them into the spotlight. And it's one of those things that I think has really helped the golden age over the last year, year and a half, get more attention, become more widely known with some of these incredible high grade copies that have come from that collection. All right, now number three is another Golden Age book that I was watching because it is also on my keepers list. This was Punch Comics number 19 with a CGC 4.0 that sold for a record $1,800. These last three shocking sales all beat my estimates by 100% or more. And so just some real incredible sales in this auction. Now, I talked about this sale on my Instagram page as well. So if you saw that one, you know that I have a, I have a 6.5 of this book. And um, it is a stunning looking 6.5 because this one has slightly brittle pages. And so 6.5 is actually the highest grade you can get with slightly brittle pages. This book is, I mean, it's killer. It looks incredible uh, for the grade. 
but I've talked about this run, Punch Comics, quite a bit. It's got some incredible Golden Age covers in it. Most people are familiar with Punch Comics number 12. That's one of those top Golden Age covers. It's a skull cover. It's got this all black background. Very, very expensive book. But me personally, issue 19 is my favorite cover from that run. I do like 12 as well. It would be awesome to have a copy of issue 12, but issue 19 is actually my favorite cover from that run. I just, I like the, something about it. I, I like the background color. I like the giant hands. And then you've, it's also just, it's a pretty, pretty violent cover in general. Uh, so I think it's just, it's a crazy, crazy cover for 1946. I, I like these really early ones because to me, it's just, it's more surprising the earlier you get when you're seeing this type of cover content. Now, for the 4.0, I had estimated the price at $825. This was 118% above my estimate. Prior record for a 4.0, it was from 2019 for $690. This beat that prior record by 161%. And for comparison on why I priced this book where I did, a 4.5 actually sold in November of last year for $900, and a 6.5, not my copy, I picked up my copy from Polanski on Instagram, uh, uh, someone I've talked about with some other books that I've bought recently, but a 6.5 sold in November as well for $1,680, and so this sale of a 4.0 beat that 4.5 and that 6.5, so this was a very strong sale for this book. So similar to Suspense Comics number 11, there was also a promised collection copy of this book. There was a 9-6. Like I was saying with Suspense Comics run, I think that the promised collection copies really brought the people's attention to these books, to this run. And so you're getting a lot more interest in the other issues that are part of the run, not just issue 12. I think the promised collection has been a big benefit to the golden age. It's just really brought a lot of attention to the Golden Age and some of the incredible covers that are out there from that time period. Now, for alternatives, again, it is very difficult to recommend alternatives for this type of book. They're in demand for very specific cover content. They are rare. And so, again, if this is something that you're interested in, then I just, I highly recommend, I show these quite a bit, uh, these Gerber photo journals. So, let's see if I can find the, uh, Punch Comics in here. So here's the Punch Comics run. It's got a huge range of cover content types. So it starts with kind of like some superhero type stuff at the beginning. Then in issue nine, it gets real violent with this, all these uh, people killing the guy drawing the sketch. Uh, I think he's like the sketch artist. Then you've got some horror covers with 11, 12, and 13. And then You've got some like cartoon covers there with like 16 and 17. Then it jumps back to horror with 19 and 20 and 21. It's just, it's really all over the place. It's, it's kind of a strange run of books, but it has a number of incredible covers in it. So definitely something where if you pick up those Gerber photo journals, it's really helpful to see all those covers next to each other. And you can see which issues are really the ones that might be interesting to you. All right, now for number two, we're gonna jump back to the Silver Age. This was Tales to Astonish, number 59, with a CGC 9.4 that sold for a record $5,280. This is one of the many classic battle covers with the Hulk, and this one, he is battling Giant Man. This is also the first crossover with the Hulk into the Tales to Astonish title, where he stays there all the way up through issue 101, and then he jumps over to his own title again with, with Hulk 102 that I talked about earlier in this video. Now, I had estimated the price of this book at $2,400. It beat my estimate by 120%. The prior record was all the way back from 2010 with $2,250, and it beat that record by 135%. It had really largely been flat ever since then, with the last sale being in 2019 for 1624 and this record sale more than tripled that last sale from 2019, so this was a big, big sale for this book. Now, it has gradually been trending up in all other grades as well, but even a 9.6 sold for 3,127 in June of last year, and this beat that sale by over $2,000. So this was a strong sale for this book, and it just kind of seems like maybe there's just an increased demand for these Hulk books, or it's just that 
the Hulk books in general didn't participate nearly as much last year in the comic boom and they're kind of retroactively starting to jump up in price to catch up with everything else. Now for this book, I really wouldn't recommend an alternative. I would just go down to a lower grade, a mid-grade copy in the 5.0 to 6.0 range you can get for around $300, or you could go lower and you could get something even more affordable if that's what you're looking for. But definitely a book that you don't have to spend thousands of dollars for. You can get a decent presenting copy for around $300. All right, now the last sale here. This was the most surprising high sale that I saw. This was Batman number 25 with a ungraded, so a raw copy graded at a 4.0 that sold for $2,100. Now, this is a unique key because this is the first ever major villain team up in comics. This is the Joker and the Penguin joining up in this issue. And it's also a mostly black cover, or at least on the edges. So it's one of those books that is going to be very susceptible to damage. Now, regardless, this was a big sale for this book, especially considering it's ungraded. It does look nicer than a 4.0. So when you look at it, you know, it doesn't really look like a 4.0, but the notes state that there is tape on the interior of the front cover. And depending how much is there, what job it's serving, you could definitely have this grade come down pretty significantly with that tape there. So something that I think was is risky <laughs> with this book. Now, I had estimated the price at $900. This was 133% over my estimate. I was a bit conservative on it because it's impossible to know how much tape is there. They don't show a picture of the interior of the cover. You just get the front and the back. And so if it's just a small piece of tape, you can see there's a little tear on the bottom of the center of the front cover. If it's just a small piece of tape on that tear, it might not hurt it too bad. But if it's something where it's along the staples, because it looks like there might be some staple rust or something, uh, then you could definitely have a bigger impact on the value of that book. Now the last graded 4.0 sold for $910 in February of last year. A 3.5 sold just in July, about a month ago, for $941, but a 5.0 sold recently for $2,045. So I'm guessing whoever picked up this book figured they were gonna gamble a little bit on this one and hope that they can get something above a 5.0 because this book jumps up in price very quickly as you move up in grade. But with that tape on there, depending what it's doing, if it's had any stains now because of it, that kind of thing, it's definitely a risk. Now it's not a risk I would personally take, but I understand it, especially with how nice this book looked if you took that tape out of the equation. Now, like I've mentioned with a lot of the other Golden Age books that I've talked about here, having alternatives is very difficult for Golden Age books. You've just gotta find covers in the run or covers for the character that interest you and start keeping an eye out for them and going after them when they come up for sale. All right, so those were the top 10 surprising sales I saw this week focused on the high sales this time because it was just such a strong auction. I thought that I would go over a lot of these really big sales that I saw. Hope you enjoyed this video, saw some cool books and maybe some ideas on some, some books that are trending up right now or having strong sales right now. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, let's get up to that 5,000 subscribers so I can give this uh, Fantastic 467 5.0 away. It's a white pages copy too, so oh, that was pretty cool. First appearance of him and a character that we know we're gonna get in the MCU and I think is probably gonna play a pretty big role moving forward. But, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here if you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.